In 1949, the People's Republic of China was just founded. However, the country still in its infancy after war, many things are waiting to be done and it was difficult to even manufacture the most basic daily necessities. At that time, iron nails were called western nails, matches were called western matches, and bicycles were called western horse. However, it is this country that developed missiles in 11 years, and sent satellites to the space 20 years later, and then became a major space power more than 70 years later. Today, China is arguably one of the biggest contenders in space program. Well, how did children turn from a poor child into a space power? How exactly did China become one of the leading countries that can compete with the biggest players in the space? What sufferings have China experienced in its aerospace development? Hi, welcome to Hot Topics Time, that and more is exactly what we'll be talking about in today's video. A few decades ago when Russia and the US are at loggerheads as to who will be the master of space, it seems China has nothing to with it. However, today, China is indeed the space power as they're launching rockets with a relatively high ratio of success. How have they managed to achieve such a feat within such a relatively small amount of time? In aerospace technical seminars, one of the veteran experts said, our generation rarely smokes because scientific research must be quiet and clean. If the foundation is not strong, the mountains must shake, the attitude of engaging in scientific research should be like walking on the tightrope, like stepping around the edge of an abyss. Space activities are actually very dangerous. Early Chinese rockets did not have escape devices on their launch towers. When we launched satellites for the Americans, American experts refused to go up and asked, what if there is an accident? Chinese engineer replied, there is no way to go back. In fact, since its birth, China Aerospace has faced blockades and suppression for a long time, and has fought against each other day after day for decades. In this regard, Premier Zhou Enlai gave China Aerospace a famous dictum, serious, thoughtful, considerate, meticulous, reliable and then be perfectly safe. As for China's aerospace industry, in addition to having nowhere to retreat, more often there is nowhere to go. So when it comes to independent innovation, it is nothing more than, I am in charge of my destiny. When others don't give you a way to go, we will make a way for ourselves. President Mao once said, Khrushchev's help is the reason why China's missile and atomic bomb have made great achievements. His decision to remove experts forces us to go our own way, we should give him a medal. China's yesterday had been inscribed in human history while China's today is being created in the hands of hundreds of millions of Chinese people, China will surely have an even brighter future. After learning about China's space spirit, now let's take a look at how modern China has won a seat in space? Do you know conflicts in space occur more easily than we think? Recently, Musk's action has caused a stir and led to severe criticism from Chinese users on Chinese social media. Some Chinese netizens said that the Starlink satellites are just a pile of space junk, while others described them as space war weapons of the United States. In fact, these drunken lunatics rampaging in space have plagued the world for a long time. Data shows that Starlink has involved about 1,600 similar incidents, accounting for half of all accidental approach incidents of spacecraft. Behind these dangers, a more serious problem is now exposed as more and more Starlink launches are almost unconstrained, low-Earth orbits will be occupied by more Starlink satellites, and the similar rambling behaviors will absolutely increase accordingly. Space belongs to all human beings, not exclusive territory for Musk to make money. The best way for China to deal with the U.S. training plan is to also establish its own global satellite communication network, so China proposed the Hongyan Constellation Plan. Similar to the U.S. Starlink, the Hongyan Constellation is also a global satellite communication network. It consists of hundreds of satellites. It is composed of satellites in low Earth orbit. 
It can provide mobile internet connections for users anywhere in the world, only requiring users to have a special satellite signal receiving device. So far, China successfully launched the first batch of test satellites of the Hongyan constellation, and they are currently operating in space. China has conducted a large number of tests on them, which has proved that this system has great strength. And it will take 10 years to complete it. What attracts the attention of Western countries is that China's Hongyan constellation can not only provide mobile internet connections, but also has a special advantage, that is, it can provide 6G communications signal coverage directly from space to the ground in the future. Although the US Starlink can also do this, but its ground users must be required to carry an additional satellite receiving device. This was also required in the early days of China's Hongyan constellation. However, after China successfully develops 6G communication technology in the future, it will be possible to manufacture 6G communication base stations that can be installed on satellites. So, the Hongyan satellite can transmit 6G signals to the surface from space. This will make the Hongyan constellation far stronger than the American Starlink system. In other words, once the Hongyan constellation has such capabilities, China will build a satellite communication system that can provide ground users with mobile internet connections anytime, anywhere, far beyond Starlink in the United States. As we all know, China's Beidou satellite navigation system has become the second largest navigation system in the world after the US GPS. After China completed the Beidou satellite navigation system network, the era of the US GPS monopoly on the global satellite navigation market came to an end. Many countries announced that they would connect to China's Beidou satellite network, stealing a large GPS overseas market. China has also become the only one in the world that can compete with the United States in aerospace, a country with the highest level in the field. Therefore, American politicians have been exaggerating the space threat theory, and the fundamental reason is that they are worried that the space hegemony will be taken away by China. It is not difficult to see that with the experience of building the Beidou satellite navigation system, China not only accelerated the progress bar when networking the Hongyan constellation, but also became more skilled. The reason why the Hongyan constellation has attracted much attention is because if it can be completed on time, it will be the most complete satellite network system at present. Judging from the current trend of Sino-US relations, if the United States takes the lead in developing 6G, then the situation in the field of communications can be imagined. Of course, this is not fabricated out of thin air, because the US Starlink plan needs to be supported by 12,000 satellites, and may even reach 42,000 satellites in the later stage, although the range that can be used to launch satellites and form Starlink is quite large, but with such a large number, it will inevitably occupy a lot of satellite frequencies and low Earth orbits. After the completion of the US Starlink plan, it is very likely that other countries will not have low Earth orbits for satellite launches. Therefore, instead of launching satellites after being affected by the Starlink plan, it is better to be the first to launch satellites to occupy low Earth orbit in advance, just to break the enclosure action initiated by the United States with satellites. Okay, that's all for today. Hot Topics Time, time to explore the wisdom behind the news, we will see you in the next video.